Thanks for joining us once again in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. And today we visit with Icky Woods. Man, what a football player. His rookie year in 1988, he took the National Football League by storm. Not just the Bengals, not just the, Nas not just the uh, city of Cincinnati, the entire league, the entire country. Everybody remembers the Icky Shuffle. I'll never forget Paul Brown doing the Icky Shuffle. We talk about that and so much more. Legendary Icky Woods. I think you're really going to enjoy it. What do I remember about the Icky Shuffle? The thing that I remember most is the unification of a football team over an accomplishment. That was the Icky Shuffle. Fifteen times Icky Woods rushed for a touchdown, and it got to the point where fans, players, coaches, everybody was anticipating the celebration of doing the job right, getting the job done, doing your job well, all those kind of things. Everybody can contributing to the success of the football team. And the icky shuffle was the, the stamp of approval on all of that. And I think the players looked forward to it. The fans looked forward to it. The media looked forward to it. The coaches looked forward to it. Everybody wa wanted to be part of that celebration. And that's what the icky shuffle became. And really, it was it's the seal of approval was when Paul Brown decided he was going to do the icky shuffle for the national media. And everybody was stunned when Paul Brown started doing the icky shuffle, three steps left, three steps right, three steps back, and BB was all over it. And I uh, gave it his endorsement. And at that point in time, the icky shuffle was here to stay. And uh, the icky shuffle in 1988 Super Bowl 23, Cincinnati Bengals, peanut butter and jelly, hand in hand. Welcome once again to our beautiful First Star Logistics studio. Special guest today for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham is the one, the only, Icky Woods. How you doing today, Icky? Doing good, Big Lap. What's up, baby? How are you? I'm hanging in there, man. Hanging in there for sure. You know, it's uh, on the right side of the grass. That's what I always say. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. So here we go. So let's start. I'm going to do a... a this is your life, Icky Woods, kind of deal a little bit. I'm going to take you back in the in the Wayback Machine to Edison High School, Fresno, California. Icky Woods, I'm sure, was the stud athlete. How many sports did you participate in, Icky, besides football? Uh, say again, Lap, you was kind of going in and out. I really couldn't, uh, you kind of fading in and out on me. Okay. I was just going to say, I'm going to take you back in the uh, in the Wayback Machine. We're going to do a, This Is Your Life, Icky Woods. And I'm going to take you back to Edison High School in Fresno, California, where I'm sure you were the star athlete. How many sports did you play, Icky? Uh, I played uh, I played two. I played uh, football and basketball, and I ran track. So I uh, actually three sports. So I was a three sports guy. You know, I ran the... Uh, the 100, the uh, 200, uh, the quarter, and then the uh, four by one uh, relay. And uh, we actually won the state uh, in 83 in the four by one uh, relay. So uh, so I had some uh, pretty good teammates, man. And uh, individually, I was OK. I wasn't wasn't fast enough to get in that individual 100 or 200. But you know, we were we, we were fast enough to uh, win it uh, the four by the four by one my my junior year. So, what about basketball? What position did you play in basketball? Basketball, you know, I was I was like the Charles Barkley. I was a forward. I was a ground mound to rebound. You know, big big body kid. You know, uh, football player who who got in there and uh, they needed a big hard foul on somebody. They send the extra in there. <laughs> So, Icky, you get you get a, an, an offer from University of Nevada, Las Vegas, to play college football. Was that uh, what other options did you have? Were you kind of a late bloomer, or what options, other options, money, do you had coming out of high school? 
Well, Dave, you know, when I when I came out, man, I didn't have anybody to tell me that uh, you when you got letters from certain schools, you were supposed to send those letters back. So I had a big shoebox under my bed full of uh, full of letters and the questionnaires that they would send out to kids. And I didn't know I was supposed to open those up and and uh, fill the questionnaires out and send them back. But I did have uh, letters from like Oklahoma, USC, UCLA. Uh, Oregon, uh, you know, Ohio State, uh, Michigan. You know, I had all the big schools sending me letters, but I didn't know I was supposed to open them up uh, lap and, and send those questionnaires back in. Uh, but UNLV w- wanted me and they, they recruited me. I actually wanted to go to Fresno State. I wanted to stay home and, and go to school at Fresno State, but um, – Sweeney was the coach that year, and he wasn't giving scholarships to in-town kids. So uh, Vegas came in and gave me a full ride, so uh, it was a no-brainer for me. So your freshman year at UNLV, you have a teammate by the name of Randall Cunningham. You guys go 11-2, and two, I think it was, and you win a bowl game, the California Bowl, you beat the Toledo Rockets, and, and you rush uh, nine times for 53 yards and a touchdown, and it's beginning of a glimpse of what Ike Woods is going to be all about at UNLV. What was that like playing with Randall Cunningham, you know, as a true freshman? Oh, it was unbelievable, man. Just to, uh, you know, also Randall was a uh, All-American punter as well, man. So I got to see him, man, uh, do do some amazing things. You think uh, he did some amazing things when, when, he, when he got to the Eagles <laughs> and played for them, man, but he did. The Eagles and uh, and, and the Minnesota Vikings, he did much more of that in college, man. It was, it was unbelievable some of the things that he, he did for us in college, and that was one of the main reasons we uh, we won the California Bowl that year and, and had, a, had a great year, man. It was all about Randall. I was a freshman. I got a chance to actually play in the Senior Bowl, and it, and it was in my hometown of Fresno. So that was great. I got to play in there and, and rush for a few yards and and got a touchdown, man. It was a it was a great feeling to go back home and be able to do that. So in 1987, your senior year at UNLV, you lead the nation 1,658 yards rushing, averaging almost six and a half yards a carry. Six and a half yards a carry. That's that's unbelievable. And a couple of different times, you ran the ball like 37 times in a game. So, you know, you start showing that durability and, and how you can you know handle such a big, heavy workload. Uh, 265 yards against University of Pacific was your high, you know, on the season. You rushed for 100 yards or more nine times, 200 yards or more three times. Just an unbelievable season. What's your biggest memory of your senior season at UNLV? Well, I think my biggest memory of, of, of that whole year was uh, coming back from uh, going uh, home, um, going into my last year. It was my last year lap. I really hadn't done anything uh, the following three years. And um, and I had a, a coach by the name of John Montgomery come in, and he was the new running back coach. And I uh, didn't know the guy lap. I, I come back and I'm I'm a normal self. I'm coming back late. I'm two days late from getting back to school, coming from home, and I'm in the the uh, mess hall and I'm um, getting ready to sit down and eat and lap. I used to always wear my hat cocked to the side like that. And right. uh, he came in and and I'm sitting down getting ready to eat and this guy walks up to me and he say, "Huh, son, take that hat off." And I kind of look up at him, lap like you know, to say to myself, like, "Who you think?" And he can see the expression on my face as I'm, you know, looking. He say, "I'm John Montgomery. I'm the new running back coach." I said, "Oh, oh, okay, okay, coach, okay. I, how you doing, coach?" He say, "Okay, I wanna." He said, "I wanna see you in my office in 20 minutes." And so, and you know, the mess hall was clear side, clear on the other side of campus. So I had to scarf my food down real quick, run, 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 run across the campus and, and meet him in his office. And I uh, get to his office. He brings me in. He sets me down. He says, son, I just want to tell you, I've heard a lot of bad things about you. He said, but we're going to start from square one from this day forward. Everything that I heard about you is thrown out the window. 
He said, I want to ask you a serious question, and uh, I need you to answer it seriously for me. He said, son, do you want to play in the NFL? And I looked at him. I was like, yeah, coach, you know, every 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 player want to play in the NFL. He said, no, son, do you want to play in the NFL? I said, yes, coach, I sure do. He said, well, I tell you what, son, starting today, if you do everything I tell you to do and you give me 110%, I guarantee you be a first, second round draft choice. Ah. Then Lap looked at him, Lap. I, you know, I don't know this guy from Adam Lap. I looked at him and I was like, man, this guy blowing smoke up my butt, man. He can't make me a first, second round draft choice. I said, but you know, it what you got to lose, man. You got one year left. You know, let's you tried it your way the first three years. It didn't work. Let's try it his way and see what happened. And Lap, that's what I did. You know, I I I just dedicated myself to, you know, doing doing everything the right way. And I did everything he, he told me to do. And as we, uh, you know, back then, Lap, they didn't have the internet. So every Tuesday you had to go get the uh, USA Today and go to the sports section and see, well, who the leading rushers and leading passers and leading catchers are during the year. So right. every Tuesday we would meet in his office and we'd watch. Every every week we see where we at on the uh, on the nation's leading rusher list, and each each week, you know, I'd have a big game and we'd move up, and then uh, by the uh, by our last game, I was in I was the number three in the nation behind Ironhead, and I think it was Brad Muster, and then uh, I needed 184 yards. Everybody else had already played their games. I had one game left, and I needed 184 yards to become the nation's leading rusher, and I just so happened to get 187. But, <laughs> I, but uh, yeah, yeah, lap the whole first half lap. I, I had 33 yards the first half. We come in at wow. halftime. Uh, my coach come over to me, say, uh, hey, he said, excuse me, war daddy. He used to call me War Daddy all the time. He War Daddy, what you doing out there? He said, you trying too hard. He said, son, relax. Let the game come to you. He said, stop trying to, you know, to break the record. Don't even think about the record. Just go out there and relax and have fun and, and just run the ball, son, like we've been doing all year. Lap, I did that. Came out the second half. We were down 31 to 10. Came out the second half lap. I rushed for 150, 150 yards in the second half and three touchdowns to tie yeah. the game up. And yeah. the play that I took over the nation's leading rusher lap, I needed four yards to be four yards to become the nation leading rusher. We was on the five yard line. Four <laughs> yards become the nation's leading rusher. A touchdown to tie the game up. And man, it it was phenomenal. We ran like a a belly plate, like I busted inside and I bust outside. And it was me and the linebacker, the only one. And I, I ran around the corner and he grabbed me by my neck brace and I just slung up out of it. And by the time I slung up out of it, lap, wasn't nothing but end zone lap. I walked into the end zone, man. It was, it was amazing, bro. It was, a, it was wonderful, man. I was happy. And then, after, you know, after I scored the touchdown, over the loudspeaker, they tell everybody I'm the nation's leading rusher, and then all my guys come over and jump on me. Lap, I'm tired. Lap, I'm, get off me, man! I'm tired. Get off me, y'all! Get off me! But it was, it was wonderful, man. It, it was, a, it was a fun time. Lap, I tell you, brother. I tell you, just to see your reaction on the memory. I mean, I can't imagine how excited you were when it was unfolding and taking place. And uh, Coach Montgomery said. Yeah, I'll get you drafted first or second round. You 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 end up being the thirty first selection in the draft. In today's draft, that's a late first round pick. But in the draft, when you get drafted, it was an early yeah. second round pick. You come to the Cincinnati Bengals, and by the way, you know, uh, leading rusher in the nation, I think, is a big reason why you get inducted into the UNLV Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Hall of Famer. That's that's big time stuff. What was it like getting inducted into the UNLV Hall of Fame? Yeah, thank you. It was it, it was a great it was a great time, man, to get inducted. I I I went in with Armand Gillian and a few other people, man. But it was it was great to 
be uh, inducted into the uh, UNLV Hall of Fame, and then I'm also in the uh, the Fresno Athletic Hall of Fame. Being from Fresno, they, I'm inducted in that Hall of Fame too, man. It's just a it's just an honor to uh, to be inducted and, and, and be considered amongst uh, some great athletes. So now we get to 1988, Icky Woods' rookie season with the Cincinnati Bengals. Coincidentally, the Bengals uh, go to Super Bowl 23 against the San Francisco 49ers. And Icky, you took not only the city of Cincinnati, you took the National Football League, you took the nation by storm. And uh, you set rookie uh, rushing record of 1,066 yards. Now, Corey Dillon uh, set, broke that record since, but 1,066 yards, 15 touchdowns. You averaged 5.3 yards per carry in the National Football League as a rookie. What was that like, man? What was that experience like to dominate like you did as a rookie? Well, it, it, it was fun, Lap, but I, I didn't do it by myself, Lap, as you know. With, without you big hogs like yourself up front <laughs> blocking for us, guys, man, we can't do nothing. You know, and I had the likes of Anthony Munoz, Max Montoya, uh, Bruce Kazerski, Bruce Reimers, Blind Blados. Uh, you know, Rodney Holman, tight end, blocking for us. Man, so I, I had a slew of guys, James Brooks, my running back counterpart, Stanley Wilson, man, and Boomer Esiason. And then we had the, the Brainiac, Bruce Coslett, and Sam Weiss putting that, that, that no huddle offense together, man. And we just, we mesh. And, and, the, and the great thing about it is when I got here, the system that we ran here, was similar to the system that I ran in college. So I picked up on it real easy. I just had to get the terminology down and, and learn the audibles. But other than that, man, it was it, it was like, you know, playing in the same offense I played in college. And I think that's why, I, why it messed so well for me when I got here, man. It was great. And like I said, I played alongside James Brooks, who's another great running back. Learned a lot from him, man. He took me up under his wing. And uh, taught me a lot, and, and and kept me on kept me on the straight and narrow. And I tell you, bro, it was just it was a blessing to come here and be in the the situation that 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 I was in. So I was it it was phenomenal, and and and, uh, and we had a great time, man. It was it was fun to make it to the Super Bowl. And the only thing, man, only bad thing about that season lap is we we didn't complete it, you know. I know the feeling, man. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, same thing happened. We had a great run, 1981, get the Super Bowl 16. Don't get it done against the 49ers, just like Super Bowl 23 in 1988, uh, crazy enough. But you rush in, in the playoffs. Uh, you have the great regular season, but you continue it in the playoffs. You rush for still a team record. You hold all the rushing records from a playoff standpoint. you got 228 yards rushing and three touchdowns. In the playoffs that year, as you guys uh, advanced to the Super Bowl, so as the games got bigger, it didn't get too big for you, man. You you roasted the occasion. Uh, what was your mindset uh, like when you went into those playoffs as a rookie? Lap, it was uh, I had a I had a good mentality. Lap, I you know the one the one thing uh, we went into the game knowing that is is we was going to run the ball, Lap, I, and and we knew that, and and that was our strong point. With me, JB's, uh, uh, Stanford Jennings, and uh, and Stanley Wilson, man. So we had four guys who was interchangeable that that could come in at any time, and uh, and we don't lose a beat, man. So we had a great running back core that year. And like I said, with the offensive line we had, man, that was a that was a great thing. I'm just you know a little disappointed uh, that we get to the Super Bowl game and try to turn into a passing team. Instead of sticking with what got us there, which 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 was the run game, you know. So, uh, but but other than that, lap we we had we had a lot of fun and and it was uh and it was a it was a heck of a ride, brother. I tell you, man, it was it was great. So many things from that 1988 season, like you mentioned before, Sam Weiss so innovative and in, with Bruce Costa with the no huddle offense and Boomer Siason, such a high football IQ, you know, executing that whole thing. But then the icky shuffle became big. I mean, huge, monstrous during that, uh, during that <laughs> celebration after touchdowns. When Paul Brown, 
did the icky shuffle in the locker room, I said to myself, "Woo, this is big. <laughs> this is this is going to be really big." What did you think when when you saw Paul Brown doing the icky shuffle, man? Hey, lap man, it, 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 you know, I, I was looking at the TV, man, and they were, you know, talking to him about the shuffle, and to see him break out and do it on national TV was, was unbelievable. You know, it was really out of character because, because Lab he never done anything like that at all, you know. Paul Brown was, it was straight lace, man, you know, just straight lace and really didn't do nothing uh, out of the ordinary, man, but to see him do that, man, just, just warm my heart, really, man. And I, I, I tell you, we were. I was uh, sitting in my locker, man. And you, and you remember Paul used to come right in through the door, and he would come through the door, and he'd go straight to the back. Every time he come in, he come in, he go straight to the back. He really wouldn't yep. talk to nobody. He just walked straight to the back where the coach's office was. Yep. And this particular time, lap, he comes in, he, uh, he stops. He looks over at me. He start coming my way, Lap, and I'm like, oh, man, what did I do? I said, I'm thinking, Lap, what did I, I know I ain't did nothing. You know why? You know, why is he coming over here? Well, I, I know I ain't did nothing. So he comes up to me, Lap. He looks at me, and he says, Icky. I said, yes, sir. He <laughs> says, I'm going to tell you this, son. He says, personally, I don't care too much for that dance that you do. He said, but my wife loves it, and you can do it anytime you get ready. I said, oh, shit, we got the stamp of approval by the big man. Well, okay, we in now, baby. <laughs> All right, so I know yeah, you. Yeah, brother, that was, that was amazing, man. <laughs> That's great. I know you've described it a million times, but take us through the evolution of the Icky Shuffle. How did the Icky Shuffle come about? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking. Well, that actually, uh, I was uh, sitting at home uh, with my two oldest kids at the time, and they were five and two. I had flew my mom in. We were playing the Cleveland Browns. I flew my mom in, and we were up at the time, uh, me and the two kids, some music was playing, and we were up laughing. I was, I was up there, and I was acting crazy, and I was like, Mom, if I score tomorrow, this is what I'm going to do. She was like, boy, you bet not do that. I said, Mom, I got to. I got to. So I scored a lap, and it kind of started off where I just took the ball and just put it in between my legs, kind of like this, and just hopped in the air a couple of times. And, you know, Ricky Dixon, who was our first-round draft choice that year, came up to me after the game, and he was like, Woods, Woods, what was that? I was like, hey, Rick, man, that was my celebration dance. He was like, Woods, man, that thing was whack. I was like, what you mean, Rick, whack? He was like, yeah, man, it was whack, man. I say, so what you think I ought to do, Rick? You think I ought to put some steps to that? He was like, yeah, man, yeah, it throw some steps to it. I said, okay, Rick, okay, cool, cool, cool. So lap the whole week, I thought, what can I do? What can I do? Lap, I couldn't come up with nothing. And then five minutes before it was time to go out and play the game, it just hit me. Lap, I said, Rick, check this out, bro. This is what I'm going to do today if I score. I said, Rick, I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I'm going to hop back three times and spike the ball. He was like, oh, yeah, Ick, man, that's going to be live. That's going to be live. So I was like, cool. So we went out there, and uh, I did it. And, Lap, I tell you, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, Lap. We were winning ball games. And we were headed to the Super Bowl that year. And that was probably one of the major reasons that that that, that took off the way it did. How important was uh, Jimmy Anderson as a, as a running back coach in your transition to the National Football League? Man, Jim, Jimmy Anderson was, uh, was above board, man. He was uh, – I wish I would have listened to him – more than I did when I came in because I was 
you know, a young gun. I was hot headed, thought I knew everything, man. And if I'd have just came in and 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 listened to had most of the things that he told me, I probably would have become a better back. Probably would have lasted a little longer in, in in the league if it wasn't for my knees. But I tell you, man, Jimmy Anderson is is uh, is a great. He was one of the greatest coaches I ever played for, and and also a great man at that. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. So, take us to Super Bowl 23 against the San Francisco 49ers. And before the game, you mentioned Stanley, Stanley Wilson. He has his, uh, obviously, his, uh, his relapse and is not able to play in the Super Bowl. So you lose Stanley Wilson. People don't understand how big of a loss that was to the offense in that football game. Talk about what Stanley Wilson meant to the football yeah, team. Uh, uh, both on and off the field. That, that, yeah, that, that was a big blow lap. That, that, that was probably um, – that, that was a blow before the big blow lap because Stanley, not only was Stanley Wilson uh, a part of our running back crew, but you know as well as I did, Stanley Wilson was a morale guy. Stanley would walk up and down the sideline cussing people out, telling them, hey, these guys are not better than us. Get your heads out your butts. Let's kick these guys' tail and lap. We needed that. We we missed that because, you know, no one could do it like that person. You know what I'm saying? And and we missed him, man. We we missed him. Uh, we missed him a lot. I think if we if he would have been there, we probably we probably win the game lopsided. But, you know, and then we then we lose Crum Ride the first series, you know, the third play of the game. Yep. And that that was a big blow to us. But Lap, we we still had chances to win. Lap, you know, he, he, I don't want to say that's the reason that we lost. We still had chances that that we did not take advantage of. Yeah, when Stanford Jennings uh, returned that kickoff and and Breach hit a field goal, you know, to to uh, to give the Bengals that was the first lead and only lead in in the Super Bowls, both games against the 49ers. We fell behind by. 20 nothing to him and made it a game 26 21 but we never never really you know, had a lead at any point in our, our Super Bowl loss in, in 81 but 88 got a lead and uh and then Joe Montana you know that weaves his magic that that football game had so much going on in it and I think as a you know as an observer that if Stanley Wilson and Tim Crumry both played that football game I think it's a, a two score game in the Bengals' favor. I really do. I I do too, Lap. And you know, I I think um, you know, I I I think if if we would have continued to keep the pressure on Montana like we did for the first fifty seven minutes, instead of you know going to the prevent defense, I, I think that defense does nothing but prevent you from winning the game. You know, we if we keep the pressure on him and we keep rushing him the way we were rushing him for the first 57 minutes, I think I think we have an opportunity to 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 still win the game. Uh but you know uh as you know Montana is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game and and if you give him time, he's going to find a way to pick you apart and and I think that's what we did. We gave him we gave him time which we should have kept you know, the defensive pressure on him that, that we had on him for 57 minutes. So, you know, uh, hindsight's 2020 lap, you know, but it was a great game, you know, uh, uh, wish we could have won it, but we didn't. So we just got to, you know, take that one on the chin and hopefully one day uh, or uh, one day in my lifetime, I'll get to see them go back and, and do that. So you have a, you have a season, your rookie year, Icky, that is like, as good as anybody could ever dream to have. And you're a pro bowler, you know, you're, you're one of the most valuable players, if not the most valuable to his team in the league. And you have that, you're on that high. And then man, the knee injury, the ACL injury uh, happens. What, what, what was that like to go from that incredible high to the, to the low of uh, having to deal with that tragic injury that you had to deal with? Well, it was hard lap, you know, uh, especially com coming off the year that we had, you know, all the expectations of the 
following year, you know, we were still a very young team and we had, you know, aspirations of uh, getting back there. And then we lose uh, Max Montoya and plan B free agency. And, you know, then I get hurt. And then there, then that was, you know, sort of the, 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 the downturn of that following year. We, we don't do so well. Uh, then I come back off, off the knee injury and in training camp, you know, uh, Rookie guy could win a no tackling drill. I'm running up through the hole. Guy grabs me by my face mask, twists my whole body around, and lands on my other knee and and mess my my my, my good knee up. And so you know, and I trained so hard to get back to uh, to that form and to have that happen in in training camp and a no tackling drill was uh, was very unfortunate. No question about it. But the uh the fact that you made such an impact on the city of Cincinnati, uh, you know, and, and I guess, did you have to fight the why me? I mean, why would something like this have to happen to me the way your career had started? I did. It was, was it a tough thing to, you know, to not fall? Uh, mentally? Yeah. yeah Lap, it, it was tough. It was tough, you know, going, going through that, you know, we, we all go through that as players when you get an injury, you know, why me, you know, why, why did I, why did it happen to me? You know, it, it, it happened. It, it happens for a reason. You just got to just got to keep rolling and deal with it. Lap. You know, that's that, that's life. Life goes on. There is life after football. So you just got to you just got to keep grinding and make things happen. That leads me to uh, to the next phase of, uh, of Vicky Woods. You know, you're, you're such a great personality and you'd be loved here in the city of Cincinnati. Life after football in Cincinnati for Icky Woods. What's it been like for you, man? Well, 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 life is good for me, Lap. You know, I've been, I've, I've been through, been through a lot, but I'm, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still grinding. You know, as you know, I, I lost my uh, middle son to asthma ten years ago, so we started a foundation in his name. And as you know, I go around raising money for asthma research and asthma education, and we're just trying to, you know, keep my son's legacy alive. And as you know, his name was Jovante, and we has, we have his foundation the Jovante Foundation, and that's J-O-V-A-N-T-E, woodsfoundation.org, if you want to go to our website and check us out. So we're, uh, we're just trying to rebound like everybody else from the COVID, you know, uh, COVID uh, had us down, and we're just trying to do some, do some things to, to get back so we can continue to save lives. And um, the Jovante was a good football player at Princeton, honor student. I mean, just a special young man, wasn't he? I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a legacy to continue because uh, you, you, I can't imagine as a parent and now a grandparent, to me, to, to deal with what you had to deal with, the loss of a child, you don't ever want to experience a child going before you go. And I just, you know, that's, that's a heartache that's, that's hard, to, hard to fathom. And what you've done. Hard to, you know, in his honor, Icky is uh, just phenomenal. I mean, it's 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 incredible what you've done to keep his uh, legacy alive. Well, thanks, Lap. I appreciate that, man. But you know, I I got a big family support. As you see that big old head behind me, that's my baby boy. And so <laughs> we uh we we work together to make sure that we uh, uh keep his legacy alive and keep the foundation striving. And and our our most important thing, Lap, is a hopefully. If not find a cure, find a better way to treat asthma and and help families not go through the pain and suffering that we've been through of losing a loved one. But we're always uh, looking for ways to uh, improve on, on our foundation and improve uh, the way asthma is treated. So I know you still follow the Cincinnati Bengals, Icky. What are your expectations uh, this year after uh, two two? Pretty good uh, free agency signings. They spent a lot of money, over $100 million, a couple of off seasons in a row, and have had a couple of decent drafts, it looks like. You know, you still you don't know about drafts until a couple, three years down the road. It's anybody's guess. But what are your expectations for this football team? I, I know you follow the Bengals. Well, Lap, you know, I was, I, I was, I ain't gonna say I was disappointed in, in, in our, in, in, in the first rounder. I thought we should have got an offensive lineman. But I can understand, you know, why why they went out and got Chase. He's a young kid, uh, and he's a he's a hell of an athlete. First of all, let me say that. 
but I thought we had guys who, who, who could handle that role already at, at the receivers that we got. But uh, I was, you know, one, once they got him, I was okay with that. And then they went and got the, the big guy in the second round, which I love. And then they went out and got two more offensive linemen. So, and all in all, I, I was happy with, with the way the draft went. Started off a little upset, but as it went on and as the guys that they drafted, seeing who they draft, I said, okay, we're going to be okay. And then the offseason signings were real good. So, I'm looking forward to a to, to a good year. Hopefully, if you know, and and the, the most important thing, as you know, Lap, is to get them them two lines together, the offensive and defensive line, because that's where it starts at. And if we can keep our, our young gun upright and and this because this kid has a phenomenal arm, so he he uh, he really impressed me last year. I, I really didn't. Uh, when they drafted him, I was like, okay, well, what, what are we going to get here? And he, cause he only, he only did, did what he did for one year at LSU. But as he got here, man, and start playing, I said, this kid is the real deal. Now what we need to do is we need to go get him some protection. If we can get him some protection, he can take us places. So I'm looking forward to a good year. I, 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 I think eight and eight would be a great year for us. You know, if we can go uh, six and ten or eight and eight lap, I think that'll be a great year for us, man. I, I just, you know, I think we still need to build on that offensive line, and 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 that's going to be a key to it all. Right. Well, this year is the first year they're playing seventeen games, so I guess it'll be either nine and eight or eight and nine. It's that, that's that's good. that's a little different, man. That's right, right. seventeen. <laughs> that, that, that 17th game. What do you think about that? Well, excuse me, I messed that up. My bad. <laughs> well, I got, I, it's, it's a hard adjustment, man. What do you think about playing uh, that extra game? What do you think about that 17th game? You know, Lap, uh, you know, I, I, you know, and, and I think our, our, they're cutting down on the preseason games, right? right. They just added another. Uh, regular season game, I, I think it's good. Lap actually, you know, it, it get get the guys a chance to uh, guys who get a slow start, give them a chance to kind of pick it up at the end. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm looking forward to see uh, how the guys uh, play this year, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm hoping for a good year, man. Hopefully, we can get those guys, the those uh, free agent guys that's coming in. That's, that has a few years in the league. Hopefully we can get those guys to play well for us. Well, you mentioned uh, Joe Burrow, and, and obviously that's a huge key. I mean, uh, both times the Bengals played in the Super Bowl, their quarterbacks respectively were MVP of the league. Kenny Anderson in 81, Boomer Sison in 88. And like you mentioned earlier, surrounded by a lot of talent. You know, there it wasn't just those guys, but Joe Burrow, I think, is capable of, you know, if, if surrounded by appropriate talent, I think Joe Burrow's got that in him. I think he can take him to pretty good heights. I really do, don't you? I do too, Lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh that that that's one thing that I can say, man. This guy is uh he's proven, he's tested. And uh the year he came out, I think he was ranked number one in completions under pressure. So the the guy know what it is to have some pressure on him and he knows how to how to handle the pressure. So if we can if we can lighten that pressure up on him just a little bit, Lap, I think, you know, he can he can get us where we need to go. And, you know, with, with Jamar Chase is a guy he used to, and then he's got a few guys um, from last year's team coming back. You know, uh, our, our, our kid from last year, Higgins, yep. we got him, and then uh, uh, Boyd. So we got, we got a nice little receiving core, and then we got the tight ends, uh, Uzama and – uh, the other kids, so so we got we got some weapons, man. Then we got mixing in the backfield. Uh, we we got a nice mix of guys. So hopefully, uh, we we can get that that old line together, and and we can have a, a great year this year. Final question, and appreciate you carving all the time you've carved. You mentioned Joe Mixon as a former running back in the National Football League. Give me your assessment of Joe Mixon. Oh man, I love Mixon, man. That's my guy, man. He's a He's a hard runner, man, and you know, and that that's that's another thing, man. If we can get an offensive line, and these guys can mesh together and and open some things up for mixing, 
it, it does nothing but makes the quarterback position a lot better, man. Because then we won't be one dimensional. You know, we'll have we'll have the run game, and and if you got a run game, the play action pass game will come in effect. And that's why we were so great that we had a great run game, and and the play action pass was killing people all year. You know, if we can muster that up and get a get a great run game and can work that play action pass in with Mixon and the other running backs we have lap, I, I think that'll that'll make that'll make for a great year for us. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, man, the, the run game getting going like it did for you guys in 88, and then all of a sudden Boomer go over the top, take the top off the defense to Eddie Brown, Tim McGee, Rodney Holman. I mean, that was a sight to behold, man. You guys, you guys were a machine offensively. It was it was a beautiful thing to watch. It really was. Yeah, we appreciate that, brother. You know, because you guys was a machine when you was there. So we we know what it's like to have a machine working and all the parts working, man. That 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 equals nothing but victories. No doubt about it. Icky, I appreciate you allowing us to do a this is your life, Icky Woods, because man, you've had an incredible life. And uh thanks for uh thanks for sharing it with us here for a little bit on uh on uh, in the trenches with Dave Lapham presented by Full Star. <laughs> Appreciate you having appreciate you having me on, man. I also put my son's foundation, the Javante Woods Foundation, J O V A N T E Woods Foundation dot org. Guys, go on there and help support us, help us save lives. Thank you, Big Lap. Appreciate you, brother. You're the best, Dicky. Have a great day, man.